Where I live in Florida, people flock for this, for the sun, suck up solar radiation. And it's great for the tourism business. But it's not the best thing in the world for a cow. If you look at differences that exist between uh, different gene types that are out there, uh, you know, if we're talking about humidity, solar radiation, all of these factors, do all of our genotypes perform the same in all environments? I think there's some interesting stuff out there in terms of genotype by environment interaction that, that has not gotten enough uh, uh, popular press, so to speak. If you look at English cattle, they certainly uh, have higher respiratory heart rates, higher rectal temperatures, higher metabolic rates, longer, thicker coats. Brahmin and the American breeds are going to have more blood uh, per unit of body weight, greater surface area, more developed sweat glands, and so forth on down the list. There are some physiological differences there. Thermal neutral zone, comfort zone for English cattle is 40 to 60. Stress is at 85. We're at 85 in Florida, probably eight months, nine months, 10 months out of the year. Okay? And those cattle are stressed, and you, and you see that. Uh, it's not hard for me to, when I take my class to Deseret, and we're probably November 15th, right before Thanksgiving, and there are Angus bulls standing in the water, panting, looking like they're going to die. It's not hard to understand. There's some serious environmental issues that must be overcome here. Um, as we move with the Brahmin cross cattle, certainly stress does occur, but at a much higher level. Some of the interesting work that Paul Gino did on his uh, PhD dissertation in Florida, where they went in and they characterized hair leaf and its relation to fertility. Uh, obviously, there's a difference there between the different breeds. Uh, quite a few cattle in this particular study. Take a look, cattle with short hair coats had about an 80% preg rate, medium hair coats, 72%. Long hair coats, 62%. That's a pretty big difference. This is on cattle that are all 3 eighths Boss Indicus influence as well. So the Brahmin percentage didn't vary that much. And so as we add a lot more hair to these cattle, I think we run into some environmental issues that exist out there. Some classic genotype by environment interaction work. This was done by Dr. Olson at Florida, where they looked at um, these Boss Indicus by Boss Tars cross cows, the lighter color bar, versus the Boss Tars by Boss Tars. And what you see is that in Nebraska and in Florida, the Boss Indicus cross cow outperformed the Boss Tars cross cow. Well, Thrift, you said that about 10 times already. Okay? That's not new. But the advantage was three times greater as we moved into a harsher environment. So I guess one of the questions you have to ask is what defines a harsh environment? Some studies that have been done comparing Brangus to Angus in Louisiana have shown that when they looked at a comparison between Alicia Bermuda grass versus common Dallas grass mixture, the advantage in calf average data gain and cow efficiency was for Brangus. There was a numerically larger advantage on Alicia because that was a forage they said was the lower quality forage in this particular study. But in this particular study, forage crude protein never drop below 10. That's not a harsh environment. That's not what a lot of us are dealing with, in my opinion. So I don't think you saw the big differences that would, would normally exist because the environment was pretty good in both of these at the same location. Some really interesting work out of Arkansas has shown that when we look at cow genetic types, and again, this is Angus, Angus by Brahmin, Brahmin by Angus, and Brahmin where they're looking at two different forages, Bermuda grass and fescue. And, we look, and I'm going to look at several of these slides like this. This is actually for calving rate. One of the things you notice is that the crossbred cattle performed outstanding in both environments. No problems. The straight Angus cattle suffered tremendously when we put them on antified infected fescue. Now, this is some cattle that are run on fescue for the entire year. You notice on the other end of the extreme, the straight Brahmin cattle didn't perform very well. If we look at the same study, we look at 205 day weight. We look at the Bermuda grass versus fescue. Cattle on Bermuda grass always outperformed cattle on fescue. 
But the advantage was, was considerably larger, better than 100 pounds here, of suppression in weaning weight whenever we look at uh, straight Angus cattle on the endophyte infected fescue, which we all know can have some issues with body temperature, raising body temperature. When we look at 205 day weight per cow exposed, so we include not only weight but reproduction in that measurement, what you see is that one of the areas that really showed up was that Angus cattle on fescue didn't perform very well and they were maintained on fescue year round. Now, I don't know how many guys can stay in business right now with their 205 day weight per cow exposed around 211. Not with our cost of production like they are today. If you take a look at this study where they took it one step further and they said, well, what happens if we run some cows on Bermuda grass all year, we run some cows on fescue all year, and then we run another set of cows where some of them stay on Bermuda grass in the summer and they're on fescue in the winter. This study demonstrated that Angus cattle can tolerate that quite well. In fact, they perform as well on straight Bermuda grass as they did when we rotated them off the fescue in the summer. So we used management to accomplish that. But how many guys have got cool season and spring season forages? I grew up in Kentucky. There was one grass there, fescue. That was it. And that was the only option for many of these guys. And so I think when you take a look at this and you look at the suppression in this particular study, um, calving rate was at 56% on fescue for those cattle. I think there are some serious issues, whereas these other cattle were performing very satisfactorily. You take that one step further, and again, 205 day weight per cow exposed. <clears throat> Similar trend here, where these cattle just would not perform at all, and we can alleviate some of the effect of that by rotating them off. So you can accomplish some of this with management. You can change your management and alleviate some of that environmental stress. Here's another study out of Oklahoma where they took a look at, uh, well, what about spring versus fall cattle? And one of the things that really showed up when you look at the proportion of Brahmin from zero quarter to a half, on pre weaning average day to gain, as Brahmin percentage went up in the spring, there was an increase in terms of calf gain. But in the fall, it was flat, nothing. So calves born in the spring raised through the summer benefited from having more boss syndicus inheritance. The calves born in the fall that went through the winter, no problem. I spent enough time in Oklahoma to know that it gets hot there. And I believe that's one of the major effects that's going on here. And the same trend, the exact same trend uh, occurred here for weaning weight where we stepped it up about 20 pounds for each quarter percentage. I don't, you know, I have a lot of concerns about this. Cattle that don't thrive in the environment will not produce well in that environment. And I've seen it on some of the largest ranches in the country. Uh, when I go and visit, and it, again, in no, mid-November, and they've got their keeping heifers out there, and these are keeping heifers that are yearling, so they're getting ready to breed. And you've got some heifers with hair on them about an inch and a half, two inches long, and they're weighing about 500 pounds, and the bulls go in next week. I've got some concerns that that's the right genotype for that particular environment. Um, and it's true of breeds, strains, or even individuals within breeds. You know, it, adaption is shown in numerous ways. Obviously, we want cattle to survive, but we really want them to reproduce, grow, and have a long life at it. Uh, so I think there's some, some of this genotype by environment stuff that we have to revisit, because I think it's very critical. 